Welcome to a Lean Stacks instructional video. This video is part of the Spring Data Fundamentals series. In this video, we build upon the Greeting Web Services project constructed in the Spring Boot Fundamentals series. We'll introduce a data object design pattern for reference data entities. Reference entities represent a set of permissible values for an attribute of another entity. The more reference data is utilized, the more value it has because it may be easily maintained within a data store rather than within the code base itself. Reference entities share several common attributes. The ID attribute serves as the primary key identifier. The code attribute is typically a short alphanumeric variable value, which may serve as an external reference to a specific reference entity. The code must be unique for a specific reference entity type, but not necessarily across all reference entities of different types. The label attribute is a brief description of the entity. It's often used for display and user interfaces because the code values tend to be a bit cryptic. The ordinal attribute may be used to sort the reference entities in any arbitrary manner. The effective at and expires at attributes define temporal boundaries for the validity of an individual reference entity. Often, reference data is only valid for a certain window of time. For example, the price attribute of a reference entity named product changes periodically for sales or perhaps the value of a label is modified and the old row is expired where the, when the new row is made effective. The created at attribute indicates when the reference entity was initially persisted. Let's get started. I've opened the Spring Tool Suite and the Gre Greeting Web Services project. Navigate to the source main resources, data, HS. QLDB directory and open the schema.sql file. Locate the create table statement for the role entity or role table. Update the statement to include the additional columns for the reference entity that we just spoke about a moment ago. Next, open the data.sql file. Modify the insert statements for the role table to include values for the new columns. If you wish to sort the data using the value in the ordinal column, ensure that you set that value appropriately. Initialize the value of the effective at column to a meaningful date in the past. If you set the date in the future, the row will not be returned by the query. Use the now database function to generate the current timestamp for the created at column. The SQL scripts for the role table are now out of sync with the role entity model class. Let's create the reference entity class to serve as the superclass for all reference entity model classes. In the source main Java directory, navigate to the org example WS model package. Create a new class named reference entity, which implements the serializable interface. Annotate the class with the JPA annotation mapped superclass. 
This instructs the JPA framework to map the attributes of this class directly to the table which backs the entity classes that inherit from this class. In other words, all of the attributes of the reference entity class will be directly mapped to the database tables of the classes which extend it. Declare the attributes for the ID, code, label, ordinal, effective at, expires at, and created at table columns. Annotate the ID attribute with the ID annotation, since it's the primary key for all reference entities. Annotate the code, label, ordinal, effective at, and created at attributes with not null. These attributes must always be populated to preserve data integrity. Create the getter and setter methods for all the attributes. Next, let's update the role entity to extend reference entity. Begin by updating the class declaration to extend the role entity class and add the serial version UID attribute. Since all of the attributes previously modeled by the role class are now made available from the reference entity class, we can remove those attribute declarations from the role class. Our role class looks pretty empty, but that's okay. When you think about it, many reference entities may not have additional attributes beyond those which are modeled by the reference entity superclass. Some will have additional attributes, though. Perhaps a description column to contain more information than the label column can hold. Or perhaps a Boolean attribute to indicate which role is the default role for newly registered users. The real power and value of the Reference Entity Superclass is derived by having implemented a standard data design approach for all of your application's Reference Entity types. The improved maintainability of both your data and your application is your reward. The application does not currently have a Spring Data Repository interface for the role entity. Let's create one and demonstrate a few of the more commonly used queries for reference data entities. In the org example WS repository package, create a new interface named role repository, which extends the JPA repository interface. The entity type is role, and the primary key type is long. Annotate the interface with the repository annotation so that the Spring Data Component Scanner will register the role repository in the application context when the application is started. First, let's use the query method approach to declare two role queries. The first query searches the database for all role entities using the effective and expiration dates.
The second query method searches the database for a specific role by its code value. This query also limits the results by the effective and expiration dates. Generally speaking, I'm a big fan of the Spring Data JPA query method approach. When I construct applications, I use this approach as the programming standard for query definition. However, when querying for reference entities, this approach is a bit cumbersome because it's not intuitive. This lowers the maintainability and readability of this application component. When querying for reference data, the current date or timestamp is supplied to the query as a value for both the effective and expiration dates because we only want the result set to contain records where the current date is between those boundaries. Using the query method approach, we need to pass the current date as both the effective and expiration method parameters. It works correctly, it's simply not intuitive when reading the code. When a query becomes too complex to declare as a query method, one alternate approach is to annotate the repository interface method with Spring Data's query annotation. Let's use the query annotation approach to fetch these role entities. First, declare a new method to retrieve the collection of roles. Use the at param annotation on method parameters to assign a query parameter name to a given method parameter. Next, let's annotate the method with the query annotation. The value of the query annotation is the SQL statement to execute against the database. Notice the query parameters are prefixed with a colon and the name of the query parameter matches the name provided in the param annotation. This method name is much more readable for an uninitiated software engineer. The method name indicates that we wish to query for all role entities which are effective at the supplied timestamp. Now let's rewrite the second method using the query annotation approach. For demonstration purposes, I have created a role controller class which serves as a RESTful web service controller for role entities. I implemented a method that will fetch all the role entities using the role repository that we just created. Let's run the application to see these changes. Open a terminal window and change directory to the project base directory. Type MVN Spring Boot Run and press Enter to start the embedded Apache Tomcat web server. I'm going to use the Postman RESTful web service client to test changes to the application. I'll fetch all the roles. 
The controller uses the role repository to fetch all of the entities from the database, and Spring converts them into a JSON response. Notice that the response JSON contains all of the additional attributes from the reference entity class. Data modeling, and therefore entity modeling, is crucial to the success of an application. Establish data modeling standards and use JPA techniques such as the MAP superclass to create a structured and reliable library of entity model objects. When creating database structures, carefully evaluate the data relationships and how the data will be queried so that you may create constraints that ensure data integrity and maximize performance. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Subscribe to the Lean Stacks YouTube channel and follow the Lean Stacks Google Plus page to receive updates as new videos are published. As always, you can find more information on LeanStacks.com. To view the complete repository illustrated in this video, see the GitHub repository URL in this video's description.